dear students welcome to our video classes and today i am anil ghosh with you your chemistry teacher and today i am going to start with metals and non metals so in class 10 i think you know that this is a very uh, serious time uh, because we have our boards coming in and apart from that we are studying for our uh, like we have our own targets as well like for je and for neat and we have to study for that as well let me tell you metals and non metals is a chapter which is important from both the aspects okay for whatever uh, competitive exams you are preparing for or uh, the boards in both the cases this chapter is going to be very important for you now in this chapter mainly we discuss with the physical and the chemical properties of the metals and the non metals and different types of reactions that they they do they generally uh, involves this themselves into so this chapter is going to be a very interesting chapter and definitely uh, we are going to see some cool videos about it and definitely this chapter uh, would be very helpful for your boards examinations as well because looking at the uh, by by looking at the you know the topics that we are going to learn in this chapter this chapter i would rather say this is comparatively easier than the other chapters okay comparatively easier than the periodic properties or the carbon and its compounds okay now in and i think like if you have uh, if you just look around you okay you would be seeing all the things like the device through which you are watching this video or the things surrounding you all the things either they are made up of metals or non metals or both so there is no such elements in your room which is not made up of them okay but how would you be able to differentiate in between them now to do that you have to know their physical properties right so how by just looking at them you would be able to differentiate them so to know about the, those things the first thing that we would start with is the physical properties of the metals now the uh, like you can see there are there is a big list of the physical properties written over here like they are sign in nature they are uh, they are good conductor of electricity and heat density and melting point is high for them uh, they are moldable or called malleable they they are ductile they are um, at room temperature it is in solid form and they are opaque but all these physical properties these are all the things that you have seen so far they are just the uh you know headlines of that there is a very detailed discussions that we can do in this properties so let's just start with the first one now what is a luster if you just look at any of the jewelries any of the jewelries that you have okay like um, a gold necklace or a silver jewelry gold or like if you just look at the spoons okay if you just look at the spoons which is made up of aluminium only right if you just look at them then you definitely find that they are very much shiny in appearance isn't it they are very much shiny okay they just glows right so that is called like the metals all the metals have this property that they would glow that is called the shiny appearance on the surface which is called the luster which is called the luster metallic luster okay this is called the metallic luster now all the metals you can see over here like the gold like the silver or the copper or of them all of them are very much shiny in appearance okay so for what is the reason behind it so there is a very much you know if you just go deeper down there is a very uh, you know detailed discussion about it about the electronic movement about the vibrations of the electrons how the vibration of them like when the elect when the light is falling onto them the particles start in vibrating and as a result they just forms resonance and as a result they just give up some radiations which is um, coming there as luster so there is a detailed discussion about it when you would go to the higher chapter higher chemistry when you would learn the higher chemistry there you would be able to know that but from now we would rather say that the most of the like uh, all these things all the metals have a very uh, the surface of them are very much lustrous because the light's reflection is you know uh, either their refractive index is very high or their light is very much reflecting on their surfaces so for that reason we can see the shiny appearance on the uh metals okay metal surfaces for that reason we call it a metallic luster 
Okay, so this is the thing through which you can separate out by the metals and the non-metals. Non-metals are not at all lustrous. When we would read about them, we would uh, I would definitely tell you that the non-metals are not lustrous. They are like there are yeah there are certain non-metals like if I take iodine or if I take uh, graphite. Graphite is having the symbol of carbon only, right? Because we know that that this is the allotrope of carbon. Okay. So graphite, or you may say like um, diamond. So all these things are, although they are non-metals, although they are non-metals, but still they are lustrous. So definitely they are exceptions only. But generally the non-metals, generally the non-metals are definitely uh, non-lustrous. And the metals are lustrous. If you just take any of the metals, you'd be able to see that they have a metallic luster in them, right? Moving on to the next property, which is called the conductivity. The conductivity. Now, if I ask you, where have you heard about this term conductor or conductivity? Like in the general uh, knowledge, if I just apply now my net general knowledge, I have seen this word, I have heard this word, conductor, a number of times. While traveling by bus, I have heard this word, conductor, right? Bus conductor. So what does it mean? Who conducts the bus? When you're moving from one place to another place, the guy who is conducting, okay? That is, that guy is called conductor. So basically, metals have two types of conductivity. One is thermal, another one is electrical. You are very much aware with both of them. If I just consider the electrical conductivity, you have heard about it, you have read about it so many times. Because you have seen like most of the wearings in your house only is made up of coppers. So copper is a very good conductor of electricity, okay? So uh, there is a reason behind it. I'm definitely going to uh, talk about that. So basically, the reason is the metals, the metals have free electrons. Actually, when you would uh, go to class 11, you would learn that there is a model called electron C model. This is just for your knowledge, okay? Which is called electron, electron C model. So in the electron C model, they are saying that the metals, if this is the metal, in there, if I consider that this is a sodium metal, so inside that there are electrons. That's the electrons, like the C, okay? like water in the sea. And over the electrons, the, the metals, the positively charged metals are floating. Isn't it just like the J.J. Thompson's model that we have learned in class nine, like the positive and the negative charges, like the negative charges are floating on the positive charged atoms, right? The atom is entirely po negatively uh, positively charged, like the watermelon model. Do you remember that? This is the same like that only. So the positive charged metals, they are just floating on the sea of electrons. On the this is called the sea of electrons. It's called the sea of electrons. So the, the positive charged uh, metals are floating on the sea of electrons. This is called, this thing is called the electron C model. Fine, are we fine with that? Now, the next thing is that there are free electrons. As you can see, these electrons, these electrons over here, they are just free. They are not, uh, you know, they are not attracted by any of the nucleus. They can just move around wherever they want to. So as a result, what is happening, these electrons are very much susceptible. It's very much susceptible towards conduction. As you know, as you know, 
the direction to through uh, to which the electron flows opposite to that opposite to that that direction the electricity flows isn't it so as there are free electrons so definitely there would be uh, they are very much a uh, conductor of electricity clear so this is a very simple idea and uh, all the metals contains these type of um, arrangement for that reason only they are very good conductor of electricity fine but yeah there are exceptions as well like silver i would come to the exceptions i would come to the exceptions like the mercury they are not good conductors of electricity right now i would rather go with mercury only okay so mercury is like uh, they are not good conductor of electricity now come into the next part which is the thermal conductors so uh, like thermal conductivity is like metals can they can conduct the temperature the temperature which is like like think about it if you just take a metal if you just heat it from this side okay and if you if you just put a wax wax over here start heating it from here okay start hitting it from this side what would happen after a few moment you would be able to see that this wax is getting melted this was the wax it is getting melted and is falling drop by drop so this is called you know the like for that reason we can say this is a thermal conductor because we are heating this part and this is getting conducted to this region so that, that that is why the temperature of this region is increasing and uh, like all the wax is getting melted right so you know that heat can be conducted by three methods right in physics you have learned about it conduction convection all these things you know about it okay so basically here the conduction process is happening the conduction okay this conduction process is actually happening over here now why is this conduction process how is this happening when you are heating a particular atom this thing is getting highly energetic and it start you know it start vibrating it start it starts to move it it just tries to move okay but as it is a solid it won't be able to move so what would happen it would just radiate the energy to the next next uh, atom or molecule then this would radiate the energy to the next one this would radiate the energy to the next one and in this process uh, like one by one one by one they are supplying the entire heat from that part to this part from the uh, from the burner to the wax it is just conveying the heat in this way clear so for that reason they are very good conductors of heat and they are very good conductor of electricity as well clear now i think you can see in this picture okay you can see in this picture like uh, how the electricity is being uh, like all the things all the wirings everything is made up of copper right so copper is a very good conductor of electricity all of them are made up of metals only so conductivity is a very important topic over here fine now if i just move on to the next topic next property this thing is called i'll just show you yeah so this thing over here is the melting point and the boiling point now if i just think about what is the melting and the boiling point of this compound like of the all the metals okay so you can see this is the metals these are the values in fahrenheit these are the values in celsius okay so you can see like the aluminium brass all of them are having so much amount of uh, like the melting point is very high isn't it like look at the tungsten one 3399 okay so all the mel uh, metals they have very high they have very high melting points so the metals have very high melting points you can see like it is very difficult to melt a metal okay like this in this picture you have seen like this is the me um, molten metal molten iron or molten gold so i think you can understand looking at this like this is in the plasma state isn't it 
looks like it is in the plasma state. So it's a very, uh, very active, very highly uh, heated up. So for that reason, you can see the amount of light coming out from here. Okay. So this is a molten iron, or you can say molten gold. Okay. Rather, I think it's molten iron only. Okay. But you can say molten gold as well because we don't know it. What are they melting down, down there? Right. So uh, the metals have very high melting point. So does the boiling point as well. So the boiling point and the melting point for the metals are very high. Now, if you ask me why is that? So the answer to this is, look, the metals, the metals are very highly bound to each other. Very highly bound to each other. They have a, they share a very strong attraction force in between each other. They share a very strong attraction force in between each other. As the molecular attraction force is very much strong, so to break that bond, intermolecular force of attraction, we need to give it a high amount of energy so that it would be able to break them down. So this is the speciality about the metals that the metals are like having very high boiling points and they have very high melting points as well. So for uh, that reason, you have seen like the, all of the metals, like you can see in this chart, if this part is in Fahrenheit, this part in Celsius, if you just compare them, you'd be able to see like how uh, hard it is to melt a metal. But definitely there are exceptions. Definitely there are exceptions. Like if you just think about mercury, mercury is a metal, but it is a liquid. Let me just wait for a moment. Yeah. So mercury is a metal, but it is generally liquid in room temperature. Isn't it? It is liquid in room temperature. And uh, one more exception like gallium. Gallium is also in 30 degrees centigrade. Gallium is also liquid. Francium is also liquid. Cesium, you can say. So these all these things are like exceptions to this property that the metals are generally solid in nature. They have high boiling point and melting point, but you can see there are exceptions to this rule. There are some metals, they have low boiling point and melting point, right? So through which you can understand like all these things. So there are, uh, we are going to discuss about all, like these are the questions that are going to come. Tell me about a metal which is having a very low boiling point or melting point. This is going to be the exceptions are going to be the uh, questions. I think you can feel that. Okay, so we need to, we need to go through, speak for a moment. Yeah. So we need to go through these exceptions only in details, right? So getting it? Now, you can see tungsten over here. Tungsten is having a very high boiling point and melting point, right? A very high value. So because of that only, because of that only, we use tungsten. We use tungsten in the, like, in the incandescent bulbs, right? In the normal bulbs. But because you have seen like we use tungsten wires, tungsten, tungsten as a filament in those bulbs. So because they have very high boiling and melting point. So for that reason, what happens is when you are heating it, when you are giving some energy to it, it is getting heated up. It is getting heated up. But still, as it has very high melting point, it is not getting melted. As a result, it is showing its luster to give us the light. Clear? So these are very interesting facts, isn't it? So I think you can understand all about it. And uh, yeah, I think that would be enough for this part. Yeah. Now, the next property can be, you know, is malleability. and ductility, malleability and ductility. This is the next property. For a moment. Yeah. Now what is malleability and what is ductility? Look, let's start with the malleability one. Have you ever seen a paper soap? Paper soap, very simple thing. Like, 
uh when we are traveling by train we have seen like there are paper soaps like they are like just like papers and okay the soaps are uh, somewhat you know they are inside them if you just take some water in your hand and if you just rub it you'd be able to see that the soaps are coming out that is called the paper soaps so i think you have seen how thick are they they are very thin right they are very thin they are like the papers only the thickness is like the papers metals can be beaten into sheets like the paper soap you have seen you can beat a metal to give it a structure like that like a sheet so for that reason the way through which we can uh, as uh, the that is through uh, like the metals can be drawn into uh, they can be beaten into sheets this property is known as malleability of metal okay so for that reason we call metals are malleable so basically gold is the most malleable metal do you remember in rutherford's experiment we used to use gold foil rutherford's gold foil experiment these were this was one of the reason do you remember like gold was the one of the most malleable metals for that reason only they took gold right do you remember like they they were trying to find out ten, like uh, thickness of 10000 atoms right so that can be achieved by gold only because gold is the most malleable metal you can give it any shapes and you can make it uh, the thinner you want it, it you can make it okay so gold is the most malleable okay so the properties of metals can be beaten into sheets that is called the uh, malleability clear now we would move on to the next property which is known as ductility now what is ductility as i have told you like the copper like the uh, if you just look at your wirings all the metals they use is copper only right but if you just uh, try to think about it copper is a metal and the metals are very durable let me tell you they are very hard right and uh, you know what like the metals they are as they are very hard if you try to change its shape they would not let you do that right we call it tensile strength or rigidity as well so this tensile strength and rigidity okay tensile strength so this because of their tensile strength is very high they are very much rigid uh, rigid so for that reason what happens is you would not be able to break a metal okay but you can so metals can be drawn to wires okay about the malleability i think you have seen aluminium foil isn't it i just remembered about that you have you have seen aluminium foils so i think you can understand how malleable are they right and ductility drawn to wire so when so when a metal can be drawn into a wire so as you can see in this picture as well or in our daily life copper is a wire so uh, when the metals can be drawn into wire that property is called ductility of the metal okay they are very much flexible actually what they want to say is sodium and potassium are the exception yeah so those are the main properties sodium and exception are the cut by knife okay by the way like uh, they are rigid okay and as you can see so as this is a solution like you can see about the rigidity they are very much rigid right they are very much strong right but still sodium and potassium are the exceptions to that so when sodium and potassiums are there okay they can be cut through okay so they can be cut through knife sodium and potassium they are very soft 
both of them are very soft okay they're not at all that much frigid in nature okay now let's just watch a video on this physical properties of metals and nonmetals to understand it better i think this was a very simple uh, part i think you have understood it all but still we just watch video to make our concepts better they're just asking you what are the uh, constant of your table of what about the phone what about the laptop what are they made up of they are all made up of metals right almost everything around us This is called metallic luster, right? The, all the ornaments would shine, right? All of them have the shiny surface, isn't it? This is called metallic luster. so that is another thing so if you just uh, drop a particular metal thing that would not broken down so because the metals are very much hard in nature right they are talking about plates of gold right so the gold can be you know they can be converted into plates right this is because of the malleability property Metal can be drawn into wire. That is called ductility. Two kilometers long. So, a single gram of gold can be drawn into two kilometers long wire. Think about the ductility about the gold. Okay. So, I think you have understood all about it. So, that was a very simple video to make you understand about the properties of metals. Okay. Give me a moment. Something's wrong. No. Right. Okay. Now let's go through some of the questions. Which of the following methods is suitable for prevent preventing an iron frying pan from rusting? Okay. so how can we just prevent irons from rusting so when the irons are kept in front of the air and the moisture they gives they give you fe2o3 dot xh2 okay now now they are saying that which process is suitable applying grease applying paint applying coating of zinc all of the above so applying coating of zinc this one is the most important process we call it galvanization they are called galvanizations okay coating of zinc so if they give the coating of zinc over the metal surface so that thing would not react anymore that much okay So as a result, what is happening? The target is going to get fulfilled. Now let's just go through the properties of non-metals. So definitely, 
whatever you have learned about the properties of metals, just put a non over here before that. Poor thermal conductors, poor electrical conductors. So there are exceptions to that. Thermal conductors, diamond is one of the best thermal conductors. Okay, poor electrical conductors. So uh, like uh, there are very much uh, electrical conductors, those are very much poor, right? For non-metals. Okay, but there are graphites as well. There are graphites as well. So these graphites are very good conductor of electricity. Brittle solids, non-malleable, non-lemectile. Brittle means that uh, breaks down easily. So uh, yeah, so that these solids are brittle, right? And not malleable or ductile, okay? Non-metals are not malleable or ductile, okay? Little or no metallic cluster. They don't have any metallic cluster, but yeah, iodine, diamond, they have a very good metallic cluster. Gain electrons easily. So the non-metals, you know, like the chlorine, they want to take electrons, right, to become Cl minus. So they gain electron very easily. We also, uh, you know, uh, like the non-metals also like, Let's wait for a moment. Yeah, so the metals, what about the metals? They want to give that up. They want to give up the electrons. What about the non-metals? They want to take it up, right? Right, so all these things are there. Okay, let's go through the questions. Now, what is a non-metal which is a good conductor of electricity? So that is going to be graphite, carbon, okay? Graphite. Clear? Yeah. Yeah, so answer is written already over here, called graphite. Name of a metal which exists in liquid state. So mercury would be there, CS would be there, whatever you feel like. Let's wait for a moment. Okay, whatever, the answer is going to be Mercury. You can use gallium, you can use silver as well. Okay. All these metals are basically liquid in room temperature, as you can see in this picture. Okay. So that's it for today. I think uh, this chapter was, this part was very simple, right? I think you have understood it. So after this, we are going to build, this is, you know, this is the pillar of this uh, entire chapter. If you have understood it, after that, I would be keep on, you know, making the, uh, making the floors. Okay. So I want this thing to be very much uh, strong, okay? So that's it for today. Just read them all. If you have any doubts, just write it on the, in the, our forum, okay? And definitely we are going to meet each other in the next class. Until then, uh, stay safe and keep learning from Ask ITLs. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Uh -huh.